Now let's talk about the auditory system or the hearing system. These systems are also associated with the eight cranial nerve and its uh, structure also very close to the vestibular system. After this section, you should know, you should describe the functional organization of the hearing system and uh, distinguish the endolymph and uh, perilymph. And also, uh, you should know uh, the anatomy of cochlea and uh, know how to differentiate the inner and outer hair cells. Uh, and uh, you should know how to explain um, the how sounds is detected by hair cells and uh, transduced into action potentials and then uh, transfer to the primary auditory cortex. From uh, lecture 11a, we already know that the cranial aid can carry the information of head position or head movement. But you should also know the cranial nerve 8 also carries the information about sound. And um, we know that the inner ear uh, composed by vestibule, uh, semicircular canal, and uh, cochlea. And the cochlear portion uh, is responsible for the hearing. And uh, from this picture, we can see the ear include external ear, uh, which include the auricle, the uh, auditory canal, and then you can see uh, the red part is the middle ear. And uh, inside the middle ear, you have two small, very small bone, that is the ossicles, uh, and then you have the inner ear. So the sound wave enter or collect uh, by the external air and uh, go through the auditory canal and then hits the tympanic membrane. That very thin membrane can, be, can, uh, become, can vibrate. And then this vibration can touch or move the uh, small, the three small ossicles. These small ossicles, they connect it together to form a chain, a transduction chain. And then this vibration uh, will um, move to the, uh, uh, and uh, to induce the uh, movement inside the, of the uh, fluid inside the inner ear. And then uh, these, these um, movement of the fluid can cause a action potential. Uh, and then this action potential can lead to this signal uh, to the primary auditory cortex. Uh, in lecture 11a, we already know this picture, and uh, we only start, uh, we only learned the semicircular canal. And uh, for the this lecture, we'll talk about the, the cochlea. So you can see the cochlea are also composed by the uh, uh, two parts. So the yellow part and the blue part. So the yellow part, we call that bony labyrinth, and the blue part is the membranous labyrinth. And uh, inside the membranous labyrinth, you have the fluid, uh, we call it endolymphs. And then uh, outside the membranous labyrinth, in between the um, a membranous labyrinth and the bony labyrinth, you have this parallel lymphs. So in this picture, you can see the structure of the middle ear and the inner ear. And uh, in the left side, uh, you can see the tympanic membrane, uh, which uh, divide the middle ear from the external ear. 
and you can see there are three small particles inside the middle here. They are malleus, incurs, and staves. So you can see these three articles connect together, and then when the tympani tympanic membrane uh, vibrate, uh, uh, like lit by the sound wave, and uh, these are the uh, stape uh, which connect to the inner ear, and then the stape, the movement of the stape will cause the fluid inside the uh, the inner ear move. So if we make a cross section of the uh, uh, the tube of the cochlea, and uh, you can see the uh, picture in the lower part, and you can see that the tube um, or the cavity will divide into three parts. So you have the uh, superior chamber, the inferior chamber, and then in the middle part, you can see the cochlear duct. Um, and then uh, you can see the lower or the bottom of this um, uh, cochlear duct are the basilar membrane. This basilar membrane, you have an organ we call it organ of cortis. That is an organ for the uh, hearing, uh, the sensory receptor for the uh, sensory receptor organ for the hearing. Here uh, in this picture, you can see the structure of uh, organ of cortis, and uh, you can see the picture in the uh, lower right, and you can see the, the organs of cortis and, uh, on this uh, basilar membrane. And uh, on the top part, you can see the tectorial membrane, uh, which covers the hair cell on the uh, basilar membrane. So the uh, hair cell are uh, composed, uh, you have this uh, inner hair cell and outer hair cell. And uh, you can also see the sterocilia at the hair on the hair cell. So the movement of uh, the fluid inside the cochlea will cause or will bend the sterocilia, the hair on the hair cell, and the bend of this hair can cause ion channel to open in the hair cell. And then a receptor po um, potential will be crea uh, created. And then you can see these um, nerve fibers which uh, synapse with the hair cell. That is a cochlear nerve. In this picture, you can see the different location of the endolymph and the perilymph. And uh, you can see the, the left picture, uh, the endolymph located in the membranous lymph, then uh, labyrinth, and uh, the perilymph located in the bony labyrinth outside the membrane labyrinth. And uh, the uh, organs of cortis located inside in the membranous uh, cortis and uh, and uh, you can see the three articles uh, which that the stape connect or co uh, covered uh, the oval window which the movement of the stape will move the paralymphs and um, then uh, will cause um, the uh, movement of the paralymph and the endolymph. And then this movement will bend the hair of the hair cell, the sterocilia. And uh, the endolymph uh, uh, is different from the uh, paralymph uh, in their concentration of ions. So the endolymph is essential to this uh, difference is essential to the function of cochlea. The endolymph is rich in pitocin, 
uh, fatosin and uh, low in sodium and calcium. But paralymph is rich in sodium and low in uh, fatosin and uh, uh, calcium. Here is a summary of the sensory transduction of the sound. So the sound waves enter the external ear and vibrate the tympanic membrane. And then this uh, vibration will cause the movement of the uh, ossicles inside the middle ear. And then the movement will also lead the movement inside uh, the movement of the fluid inside the uh, cochlea in the ear. And then will cause the bending of the uh, sterile cilia on the hair cell. And the bend will cause the IO channel open. Uh, and then a receptor potential will be created. And then the, um, uh, these will cause the depolarization of the uh, um, peripheral component of the cranial nerve 8. And uh, these acting potentials will uh, propagate inside the axons of the bipolar cochlear nerve neurons. And then these will go to the central nervous system, to the primary hearing um, cranial cortex. So here's uh, another summary, also a picture which uh, tell you, give you the summary of the sensory transduction. So we already talk about the peripheral uh, sensory transduct of the uh, auditory information. So how about the central auditory pathway? We usually use this HCS lemma to represent the central auditory pathway. That is the eight will be the eight cranial nerve, the C will be the cochlear nuclei, and then S will be the superior or uh, olivary um, complex, and then the L will be the lateral lemniscus, and then I will be the inferior colliculi, and then M will be the medial geniculate nuclei, and then A will be the auditory uh, cortex, the primary auditory cortex. The uh, cranial nerve 8 actually were formed by the um, peripheral process of the bipolar neurons which located in the uh, spiral ganglia and the axons um, will terminate in the uh, super, in, in the into the cochlear nuclei and uh, uh, this um, action potential will travel from the cranial nerve 8 and then go to the cochlear nuclei So we have dorsal and ventral cochlear nuclei located in the medulla, and then the axons of the cochlear nuclei will decussate uh, to the opposite side in the lower pounds. And then the auditory information or the uh, action potential will pass through the superior olivary complex, and then forms this um, um, lateral lemniscus, uh, which, from, which is from the ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei to the upper uh, structures. Then the uh, action potential will passing through this uh, lemniscus, lateral lemniscus, and the synapse with the neural cells inside the inferior colliculus. And then uh, axons passing through uh, uh, goes to the medial geniculate uh, nuclei. And um, the neurons here will send axons to the primary auditory cortex. And uh, these uh, 
axons will passing through the internal capsule, which we learned from the last lecture. The primary auditory cortex is located on the superior temporal gyrus. So in this picture, you can see we just showed you the location of the primary auditory cortex. So here is a summary for the central auditory pathway. And uh, you can see the um, information from the eighth cranial nerve go to the cochlear nuclei and uh, to the superior olivary um, complex and to the through this lateral lamniscus to the inferior colliculus and then to the medial geniculate body and go to the uh, primary auditory cortex. And then the information got analyzed by the uh, um, associated auditory cortex. And then we know what we are hearing now. This is also another picture shows you the central auditory pathway and uh, try to find this HCS lemma in the, this picture. Besides of this uh, uh, central pathway uh, from the uh, auditory cortex, cochlear nuclei, inferior uh, colliculus, geniculate body, and then primary auditory cortex. Actually, there are other pathways uh, from the inferior colliculi to the superior colliculi, and then orating the eyes and the head uh, when you hearing sounds to all the sounds. And you have other pathways from the cochlear nuclei and to the uh, reticulate, uh, reticulate information. These will, uh, you hear, uh, this will also like the hearing, the hearing information will also activate the entire neural system. Now let's talk about the clinical consideration about the auditory system. And uh, the patient could have deafness. They totally lost, they lost the hearing function. And this uh, deafness could uh, have two types. So the conductive deafness or sensorineural deafness. Um, so the conductive deafness uh, is caused by the interruption of the uh, passage of the sound wave that will include the external air and the middle air. So uh, the example could be like obstruction. Uh, so like kids can put toys or like uh, other things into their external air and uh, can cause this uh, conductive uh, deafness or um, they can uh, cost by like the, you know, that's the three ossicle. The um, ossicle, the staves could be faced because of the autosclerosis. And uh, uh, it can cost by the excessive bone growth surrounded by this uh, uh, bony labyrinth and which is very common and uh, um, it can cause by the otitis uh, media uh, for example the inflammation of the middle ear which is very common for children the other deafness will be the sensory neural uh, deafness these deafness uh, the cause usually because of the disease of the central auditory pathway. For example, the disease of cochlea, the uh, disease of uh, cranial nerve 8, or some central auditory connections. 
it can could caused by some uh, side effect of drugs or like toxins and uh, uh, it can cause by symphysis um, or some inf infection in utero. Other consideration uh, could include the hyperacusis, the perspicuses, and the acoustic neuroma. So the hyperacusis are usually caused by damage of cranial nerve 5 or cranial nerve 7 because these two nerves innervate a very tiny small muscle which have relationship with the, three, the movement of these three ossicles. The damage of um, this uh, nerve will cause in the patient to have like very hypersensitive to the lower frequent sounds, or like increasing um, uh, accuracy of the hearing. And the pre uh, uh, um is a hearing loss with aging or degeneration of like organs of cortis. Um, and uh, the acoustic neuroma, and it's like could, uh, yeah, patient could have tumor of the eighth cranial nerve, and uh, these can uh, result in this because the tumor located like in one side, uh, the patient could have this unilateral uh, deafness. So, this picture shows you this acoustic neuroma. You can see the very big egg-shaped to uh, neuroma located in very, like just behind the cranial nerve cranial nerve seven and eight so and also compress and press this uh, uh, cranial nerve five and it may also affect the cranial nerve nine or ten because it's too big other hearing clinical consideration could have tinnitus. Patient could have tinnitus. That's uh, abnormal sounds like uh, buzzing or ringing things. Uh, it could caused by neuroma, can caused by this uh, irritation of cranial nerve eight or organs of cortis, or it can caused by over overproduction of the endolymph. And other clinical uh, syndrome could like uh, Meniere uh, disease or syndrome. These like um, usually caused by the overproduction of this uh, endolymph, or any reason could uh, affect the absorb of the uh, this uh, endolymph. Uh, so the syndrome could have this, the patient of this, uh, this uh, have this disease could have this dizziness, uh, vertigo, and nausea, or vomiting, or nystagmus. The screening of hearing loss, uh, you can do a finger rubbing test. So you stand behind the patient and ask the patient to close their eyes. Use uh, and uh, then rub your finger and ask the patient uh, which side uh, she hearing hearing the the finger rubbing, and uh, and ask the patient the the different from the left or right. Uh, ear and then um, for normal hearing you should the patient should have here the uh, the rubbing two feet away other test uh, you can like for the otoscope that can uh, like uh, observe the uh, auditory canal and the tympanic membrane and uh, some other specialized hearing tests which will be done by audiologist, and, uh, and there are there are some like turning fork test that you can do to test the hearing loss. Here's a turning fork a test we call it Weber turning fork test, 
and these tests can be used to uh, differentiate, uh, differentiate the sensory neuron legend or conductive problem. Uh, you will place the stem of the vibrating uh, turning fork in the, middle, in the middle of the forehead and uh, let the patient uh, answer like which air the tone is heard. So the unilateral sensory neural legend will hear the tone the sound in the unaffected air because um, the receptor of the sensory neural pathway have lost their function. And then the unilateral conduction problem, it, it will hear this uh, tone more in the affected side uh, because um, the uh, usually the conduction problem happens in the external or middle air and uh, it cannot collect this auditory information from these these pathway, but because of the vibration of the fork, these uh, organ of cortis still have the function to collect the vibration and then feel the sound. And uh, the affected side usually are hypersensitive, very like hypersensitive.